There are plenty of podcasts that say shit, fuck, right. piss, and they have better help sponsors. ads. Yeah, so exactly. anything, yeah, anything <laughs> is available on Spotify. <laughs> I'm like scared to start. Like, what am I going to, you know, cause how do you start a podcast? You're like, Hey, what's up party people? Like what? That's like the whitest thing I could say. Or I could be like, you're listening to the smooth jazz sounds of no. Morgan Gallo's inner mind. Uh, well, I guess I should start. Shouldn't I? <laughs> okay. What's up party people? <laughs> I don't know why I say party people. I feel like that's something that no one else says. But anyway, um, this is comedian Morgan Gallo. And I'm coming to you from Dude IDK Studios in the heart of Denver, Colorado. Uh, and you're listening to a brand new podcast called My Body, My Jokes. Little play on words there. If you didn't get you got it. Okay, you got it. You guys are smart. Um, I'm going to discuss all kinds of stuff on this podcast like from body positivity, body neutrality, my experience online, body shaming, being a woman in this really world world, being a woman in the entertainment world. I just want to talk about anything and everything that has to do with our bodies, the way they're perceived in culture, the shifts that we could make in culture. And um, I'm going to be bringing on guests every once in a while to share their self-love journeys and kind of give us an inside scoop of what they're doing in their life, whether it's a comedian, a body love expert, maybe even my mom, if she decides to not comment on the fact that I'm not wearing makeup, but we'll work on that later. And um, the best part I think about this podcast is that I'm going to be sharing news with you every other week about uh, my recovery because for the first time in Dude IDK Studio history, I'm willing to talk about and admit to everyone that I have an eating disorder. Cue the music. Woo! No one knew. Everyone fucking knew. I'm in month seven of my recovery. I... I'm in active recovery, which means I see a health team, a, health, a professional health team, care team, whatever, every week. And uh, I work actively on figuring out how to change my relationship with food and my body and weight and all that kind of stuff. And uh, also doing that while performing as a comedian in the world, telling jokes, making people happy, and then dealing with craziness online. So... That's kind of that. Uh, I won't get into the nitty gritty of my story just yet because every episode you're going to hear like a million other conversations about this and I don't want to bore you too much, but I'm going to be speaking with a ton of people. I wrote this outline on my computer and I realized that I can't read it off my computer while looking at the camera. So if anyone wants to know what it's like to run a podcast, um, my ADHD is freaking out right now. But uh, yeah, that's me. That's who I am. My body, my jokes is a name that I've been holding on to for a while. I had a very interesting experience that led me to naming this podcast that. I decided to start talking about my body issues on stage not too long ago. And when I started doing that, uh, a few comics noticed that I was being a little more open and they were like, that's cool. You know, I had a comedian that you guys may know say to me after I got off stage, oh, it's cool that you talk about your body in that way. I don't see a lot of people doing that. Hey, if you ever release a special or a piece of media, you should call it my body, my jokes. And that comedian was Jeff Ross, the <laughs> roast master general himself. So thank you, Jeff. You look like a turtle without its shell on. I love you. I appreciate you. I can't wait to hang out with you again. Also, this podcast wouldn't be complete without my producer, Anissa. Anissa's on the ones and twos. Hi, Anissa. Oh, my gosh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Is it weird speaking into a microphone? Oh, uh, just a little bit. I'm a little... I'm a little scared. A little no. nervous <laughs> Nelly. How do you think this episode is going so far? Um, I think it's going really well. Mm -hmm. I've been enjoying. I've been laughing. I have been moving and I think that's like a really good sign. 
<laughs> you've been moving on the couch you're wiggling yeah, your toes wiggling you're like toes. this bitch won't like, shut up no i think it's like excitement i'm like oh my gosh yay! oh my god we're doing it we're <laughs> toes, here i'm sitting moving. right under the fucking <laughs> ac vent so i'm getting oh, blasted uh, with cold ac and i'll do it oh my god which is amazing because last summer we did not have ac in this studio um, but yeah, that's the podcast. I'm really stoked to be here. Anissa is my wonderful producer. She works here at Dude IDK Studios, and I'm really excited to have her on board to keep me in check, help me run the podcast, give her perspective, um, and just be a friend. I think it's going to be good. Have you, um, we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Have you had any experience with like body image issues or what is your relationship to your body and how you kind of present it to the world? Right. Right. Um, well, I was raised in a very traditional Asian household. And so I, th my mom <laughs> definitely contributed. Just, 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 it's just always a the tiny moms. Bit. It's always it the is moms. always the moms, unfortunately, but she, you know, has a very set, description of what healthy looks like mm. and unfortunately mm -hmm. that is you know skinny waist um skinny thighs <laughs> everything skinny everything skinny yes. and small she would like buy me um big clothes on purpose to i guess like grow into them but then oh. i would never grow into them the way I guess a woman's body would grow uh -huh. into them. And that would also contribute to a little bit of like Interesting. dysmorphia. It was really weird. Cause she was like, I don't want to have to keep on buying you things. If you're just going to continue growing. <laughs> so oh, I'm so going to buy you. things too big. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm gonna yeah. I'm going to buy you big sense. things so that you can grow into them. Right. But then I never would grow into them. But then there was a point where I would overgrow and I oh, would like I see. start going through clothes really fast because i was gaining a little bit of weight yeah and obviously my little boobies came in well when you become a, an adult <laughs> yeah it's like yeah you're, you're not gonna be shopping for like a youth large yeah. anymore yes my childbearing hips unfortunately yeah i'm sorry i can make child. life now yeah. mom god yeah. unfortunately and how do you feel now um honestly i feel a lot better now good i do have a lot of um fluctuations i guess mm, within don't we body all weight. i know that's don't like super all. normal and i think we should normalize it <laughs> i don't think yeah. people understand that that's normal they i've had conversations with my therapist mm -hmm. and also other women about how much we fluctuate when we're on our cycles oh my god and it's like you think that you are going crazy you wake up one day and you're like oh my god i am a fat monster <laughs> and then you like go to the bathroom and you're like oh haha -ha, it's just aunt Flo," mm -hmm. and you're like wow mm -hmm. so I, I thought that i gained 10 pounds when in reality i'm just being a fucking human mm -hmm. but that's interesting well i'm happy to have you on this podcast oh, thank you we'll thank talk you more about me. your experience and my experience maybe we'll do an almond mom episode oh my gosh we'll I see how it is moms. almond moms. moms yeah i had an almond mom um although i guess i would say she was more of a cashew mom <laughs> you know what i mean like she wasn't like super bad but it was pretty bad it was enough it was enough to make me nutty <laughs> i hate that i just made that joke so yeah i'm really excited about this this is like the first time that I feel like I'm being myself in true content form because a lot of my online persona of comedian Morgan Gallo has been very just comedy forward. Look at all these shows I'm doing. Here's another clip of me in a silly joke. Um, and it hasn't really been as authentic as I'd like it to be because I've been nervous and it's nerve wracking to show who you are on the internet, especially when you're a woman and especially when you're a female comic for some reason, because people think that we are bulletproof because we're comedians. And they also think that we're like not funny or stupid because we're women. So it's almost this like double edged sword that you have to play. But either way, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to talk about what I want to talk about and talk about things that plague me every day and other women every day. And honestly, so many people outside of just the women community, woman community. So um, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking about body image and body positivity and body shaming and 
just the craziness of it. And I'm also going to be reading you my insane DMs and my insane comments and the shit that I get. And we're going to talk about it because someone needs to talk about it. I need to talk about it. I need to talk about it. My therapist is tired. So yeah, this podcast is for you. If you want a space to enjoy that, if you want to get into conversations about navigating the world, not only as a woman, but just as a human, as a nice person, you know, this podcast is not for you. If you're a jerk online, if you voted for Trump, if you're an incel, (laughs) if you bullied me in high school, you know who you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to this. I don't want to see you. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that all being said, I think we should get into our first segment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. It may not be a secret. A lot of people know this. I have a very male leaning following and uh, I don't know how this happened, but there's a lot of men that follow me across all platforms and you know, Hey, they're great. I'm not going to complain. Uh, but they have a lot of things to say about my body and other people's bodies. So I decided to conduct a poll on my Instagram recently. And I asked my followers, would you consider yourself body positive? <laughs> Anissa, when you look at these stats before mm-hmm. I share them to you, mm-hmm. do they seem accurate? Like if you're if you're looking at the fact that these are all men mostly that are answering this. <laughs> um yeah, no. No, not at all. Not accurate. <laughs> so, I'll tell you, would you consider yourself body positive? 68% of people said yes, and 32% of people said no. Now, Anissa brought up a good point when I posted this because I asked, would you consider yourself body positive? And a lot of people might interpret that as, oh, am I body positive about my body specifically? And they'll say, no, I don't like myself. So they vote no, even though they might look at someone else and be positive about their body or they might think that everyone should love themselves. But for some reason, it's different with them. So that might have skewed the tally a little bit. Um, But Do you want to hear something wild that happened? (laughs) Yes. So I posted that and, you know, the the results are like coming in. People are voting. And once in a while I check on it because I just want to see like what people that I might know say. And my mom's friend that she was on the fire department with (laughs) in Miami, like in the in the 80s, they were the first two female firefighters like on the city of Miami fire department. She voted no. (laughs) And. This woman is like a wonderful lady. She's so nice, but she's very much like an almond mom. You know what I mean? She's a bird seed mom. Like she goes to the gym. She only drinks like black coffee, white wine, you know, water. She like has no idea what like Lay's chips are. You know what I mean? Like she's all in it. And so she votes no. And then I get a DM from her. And she says, um, you're looking great. Just be healthy with three heart emojis. (laughs) And in my head, I'm like, okay. What does that mean? So she voted. Yeah, she (laughs) voted no on body positivity. And then she messages me almost to like ensure that I'm understanding what she's (laughs) saying. She's like, oh, you're looking great. Just be healthy, though. Mm -hmm. And so I responded to her and I go, um, I go, thanks. I'm in eating disorder recovery. (laughs) And she didn't respond. Mm ghosted yeah so all you have to do to tell people to stop commenting on your body is tell them you're recovering from a debilitating mental illness and they'll shut up i also asked um have you ever been on a crash diet and 33 percent said yes 67 percent said no now Anissa also brought this. Anissa has been proving me wrong left and right the the last few weeks. Crash, a crash diet. If that's not a term that you're familiar with, maybe it's kind of an older term. I don't know. But a crash diet is something you do um, to like lose weight quickly. So hence the word crash. Right. So like, you know, if you're going to prom at the end of the week, it's like drinking vitamin water all week and no food to like lose weight for prom. Like or you have a wedding and you're going to start this like crazy workout regime for three months. And it's just like you're just crashing, basically. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if a lot of people knew that. But yeah, 67 percent said no. And again, 92 percent of my Instagram following is men. So I don't know if men necessarily crash diet the same way that women do. Obviously, you can't generalize an entire gender. But I found that really interesting. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Another question that I thought was really funny was last year I asked on my TikTok, 
What is your favorite nickname for boobs? And I got a lot of really interesting responses to the point where I was like, huh, it's been a year. You know, I've I've definitely gained some followers since then. Why don't I ask it again? But this time on Instagram where they can actually direct reply to me instead of just leaving comments. So um, I'm going to read you what they said. <laughs> so on Instagram, again, asked, what's your favorite nickname for boobs? And I got so many responses, I could not record all of them. But the ones I could get, I divvied up into like seven-ish categories, right? So we have the classics. We got knockers, the girls, rack, cans, <laughs> flapjacks, bongos, honkers, breasticles, chesticles, <laughs> jugs, tiggle bitties, and the twins. See, I can, just from that list right there, you can tell... You can tell which one of these are s written by men, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I don't really know because when people respond to you, it shows like their username, but obviously you can't really tell like mm -hmm. who they are from right, that. Right. So I don't know if any women, I think some women <laughs> replied. Um, Just like, like breasticles and chesticles yeah like breast that's such, a, that's such a man thing that's such say. a man thing they're like <laughs> oh you got testicles but like on, on your chest <laughs> bro that's wild <laughs> can i put them in my mouth mm -hmm. and then we also have the spanish ones we got chichis tetas grandosas mm. tatas lolitas and chupa chups <laughs> stupid <laughs> and then this is one of my favorite categories we have like the pillow slash animal slash sweater category <laughs> And it's like dirty pillows, pillow puffles, squiggy pillows, <laughs> face pillows, emotional support pillows, lady pillows, snuggle pillows, cowboy pillows, pound puppies, tank top turtles, sweater puppies, sweater kittens, sweater meat, sweater ham, sweater yam, sweater puppets. <laughs> it's like a Thanksgiving feast. You it's know? like exhausting. Like yeah. who who is coming up with these nicknames and who's saying saying them out loud? <laughs> You know, if a guy, if my boyfriend came up to me and was like, babe, I'm not going to lie. I got to see the, I got to see them sweater hams mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. He's sleeping on the couch. Yep. No. Mm -hmm. Babe, can I see your cowboy pillows? Yeah. Can cowboy pillows, pillows is pillows? so specific too. I know. Cowboy like, pillows <laughs> makes me think more of balls than it does boobs. I just, that doesn't even remind me of a bodily our body <laughs> autonomy at that point my boyfriend in the background is laughing <laughs> he's like god this fucking bitch i don't know why i date her <laughs> okay and then we have the food and tools category mm. this one's fun i love this one. fun bags melons hammers milk missiles cannons calcium cannons mommy milkers <laughs> mommy rockets hogs cupcakes hangers yam yams rockets meat mountains weapons of mass destruction Juicy Fruits, Lung Hammers, The Powerpuff Girls, Utter Nutters, High Beam, Sand Dollars, Milkshakes, Ballistics, Headlights, Headlamps, oh Bottles, God. Milky Melons, <laughs> Milk Wagons, Hanger Bangers, Dairy Cannons, The Sovereign Milk Fund. Now, when they say The Powerpuff Girls, I'm like, okay, is it like a uniboob? Is There's it like three for of people them. with three boobs? We're I know that one. That one I was here, like, mm, it needed a little editing. You yeah. know what I mean? It, that shouldn't have been greenlit. Yeah. N that one needed a little bit of if, editing. If a man came up to me in the bars and was like, you know, can I see your can I see your powder puff girls? I'd be like, you're a pedophile. What do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. It's very it's it's very like pedo y to yeah. refer to a grown woman's boobs as anything yeah. that like insinuates a child. Like yeah. ooh, yeah, like whip out them power puff girls. Mm -hmm. Like can we maybe switch the channel? I don't mm -hmm. know. Can we do something? What about the golden girls? Right. How about that? Do you think they're all different colors or something? I'm confused. I mean, I will <laughs> say I got some uneven fucking tits. So <laughs> if, if they are the Powerpuff Girls, the right one is definitely two of them and the left one is the other mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. I also got some personal responses from this. Um, <laughs> someone said favorite nickname for boobs, Morgan and Gallo. Mm. Which, honestly, you know, zero out of ten for creativity, <laughs> really. Someone said gallows. Uh, someone just responded and said, dear God, you're bravery. <laughs> Which, yeah, I fucking agree. I mm -hmm. am a brave woman for doing this. Um, someone said, not really exciting or original, but me and my wife just say boobies. <laughs> 
I really hope that was written in by a lesbian. <laughs> like that. I hope so bad that was written in by a lesbian because that would mean that I have reached the queer people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I care about. Mm -hmm. Someone said, uh, I'm simple. I love when y'all call them yours and I call them mine. So Just, is that like a pickup line? <laughs> I, I know. I'm like, I'm like, that was like cool, you know, but maybe like repeat it to someone else. Mm -hmm. I love it when you call them yours. Like, so, so what, what context is that? Is I'm like, yeah, these are my boobies and those are your boobies. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck is doing that? My boobs actually, they aren't owned by anyone. They're, yeah. They have like a mind of their own. Yeah. Anissa's <laughs> tits aren't owned by anyone. Yeah. They're just free agent. They know? are free agents. They're floaters. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You never know when they're going to get drafted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone said fat sacks if they are big. Like those are some fat sacks. Now, I, the, the photo <laughs> I used to ask this question was like, I went walking outside with like a, bik a bikini top on to tan with like biker shorts, but I took a selfie from kind of above. So mm. it's not like you can't see like the full cleavage, but you can see a little bit of it. So this guy, I guess, thinks that I got some fat sacks, mm. which I mean, he's not wrong, but mm -hmm. weird. Um, this guy said titties and I'm in love with you. <laughs> and then another guy just said, you're so beautiful, Morgan. <laughs> So there's that. That was nice. <laughs> I appreciate when people are nice to me rather than telling me I'm ugly or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then this has to be my personal favorite category, made up words. So we have mammers, yammers, blammers, jammers, yitties, <laughs> num nums, nuzzlers, bazoombas, gazongas, bazongas, bazingas, gonzongas, <laughs> majumbos, wabos, bazoongas, jahoobies, <laughs> wabos, bajumbas, bayoobs, doodoos, and great googly mooglies. <laughs> I mean, the usage of <laughs> syllables in this is, is astounding. That was great. Astounding. That was like a rap. I know. I just put a beat behind yeah. it. Mammers, yammers, blammers, and jammers. Yiddies, <laughs> nom noms, <laughs> nom soy spazoombas. Like, <laughs> oh my God. That's wild. Anissa, what's your favorite nickname for boobs? Um, honestly, I don't know. Me, like, when I refer to my own boobs, I like to call them, like, my boobies. Because I think it's fun and silly. I'm sorry. Say that again? I like to refer to my own boobs as boobies. 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 Aw, that's but cute. But if, like, if another person were to come up to me and be like, I love your boobies, and it's, like, not my boyfriend, then I'd be, okay, that's a little interesting. I don't know if I like that. I love how we are both, like, <laughs> fantasizing that there's this world <laughs> where men come up to us and say these words out loud. Yeah, and I wouldn't, I mean, like, I wouldn't be surprised if if it were to happen to me i guess really <laughs> yeah because i men are weird <laughs> yeah they are weird they are weird they come on everything i love that answer it's so like innocent and makes me feel terrible because my favorite <laughs> nickname is slobbers <laughs> like i don't know what it is about that word just it makes me laugh every time it's good because it's such a like it's such a like dirty but like it makes sense. Yeah, like it's it's such a specific descriptive word. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. there's slob, slobber, slobby. I don't know. <laughs> I think Tom Segura said that to his wife one time on their podcast, and I just mm -hmm. never forgot it. So it's a good word. It's it like, is you a know, good word. Multiple, like when you think about it in in reference to your boobs, it's like okay, maybe they're sweaty. Maybe they're. <laughs> maybe honestly, they're my boobs are sweaty right like, now. And honestly, that's valid because mine are too. Yeah, and it's okay. <laughs> Boob sweat is real and valid. <laughs> yes. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm I like it though. I think that's a good. That I think that's a good word. Slobbers. Yeah. My We're next, gonna have slobbers merch. My next cat name. My next animal name. Slobbers. Is slobbers. Slobbers. <laughs> come <here. laughs> hey, come over here, babe. Slobbers. I'm going to move on to this next segment because this is wild and I couldn't believe I saw this. So mm. uh, I spend a lot of time looking at like articles, trying to read more about, you know, the body positive movement, what's going on in the eating disorder world, all that fun stuff. And uh, I saw I was reading an article and I saw like an ad, I think on the side of it, it was something where like I clicked into it and I saw this story and uh, it wasn't an article, but when I clicked into it, it almost it mimicked like an Instagram story where it was like slides of photos. 
And it was on the Nine News website. So this is an official Nine News story that someone approved to publish. Okay, keep that in mind. So it starts out with a slide. It's a photo of a fork picking up some noodles that look like, you know, maybe spaghetti noodles with like shredded veggies in them or something. And it says, weekend binge, side effects of eating instant noodles. Before I get into this trigger warning, this talks a lot. This says there's a lot of like fear mongering over food in this. So if that's something you're sensitive to, go ahead and skip ahead. But uh, the first slide when you click through is a photo of a woman bending over and like grabbing her stomach fat, almost like she's going to make it talk. And it says bloating water retention due to high salt intake can result in bloating that may take too long to go. I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. Too long to go where? Where does the bloating go? And bloating is something I deal with every day, you know? Yeah. (laughs) I I think it's, I I like the idea of like, oh, instant noodles. That's going to make you bloated, Mm -hmm. dude. That's actually the only reason why you blow. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's like, uh, I get bloated when I like drink too much coffee. Mm -hmm. Like everything makes you, food makes you bloated because that's part of the digestive system. Mm -hmm. And then the next slide is another photo of someone else grabbing their stomach fat and like pushing it together. And it says weight gain. The high calorie load of instant noodles is why it is not recommended for intake ever, let alone every day. Hmm. Never eating ramen noodles. Hmm. That sounds like a life I don't want to live. Also, it's talking about a weekend binge, but then it's like, oh, but don't eat them every day. It's like, well, we're not eating them every day. Isn't this article about a weekend binge? Mm -hmm. I just want to know what poor intern had to Google these stock images of people grabbing. Like, what did they Google? Like, were they like people grabbing fat? People grabbing fat, fat grabbing. Yeah, fatty McFatties um, grabbing their fat stomach. Like, Mm -hmm. that. what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like, and these are such normal looking people. Like, it's crazy to me that they're using this as like a, you don't want to look like this. So mean. It is so mean. The next one is a a photo of, not even ramen, a photo of (laughs) pesto pasta Mm. with like chunks of like ricotta in it or something. And it looks very fancy. It looks like it's like at an Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. But then it says constipation. If you're planning to treat yourself to instant noodles this weekend, think again as they're made from refined flour, which can cause constipation due to lack of fiber. Mm. I mean, yeah, but like... (laughs) What doesn't cause constipation? Again, being a woman (laughs) causes constipation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know one woman that doesn't deal with not being able to drop a load every once in a while. Mm -hmm. It's real. (laughs) IBS is real. I just can't can't with this. With pesto, too. Pesto. And the photos. It's like, do you even know what ramen looks like? Because the next slide is also like another noodle dish. Looks like some kind of Asian noodle dish, but it's not ramen. Mm Mm-hmm. And it says hypertension. Instant noodles have a lot of sodium, which can over time increase blood pressure and cause hypertension. Mm. Now, I'll be the first to say I'm not a medical professional. I'm not here to give anyone medical advice. Obviously, some of the things in this are true, but it feels like a very extreme way to tell people just to not eat something really specifically. But their argument is like, if you eat it every day, if you eat it often enough, these things will happen. And it's like... I don't know anyone that's eating so much ramen that this shit's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cause ramen isn't exactly like a top tier meal. It's not like a number one choice meal. Like if you're eating instant ramen, you're either a really busy college student, not doing well financially or just the saddest person mm-hmm. on earth. I mean, I think that's the reality <laughs> of it. Like I eat ramen when I'm sick or when I, don't have anything else in my house or again, if I'm like super busy, I just don't have time, Mm -hmm. but like I'm not eating it enough that these things are going to happen. Right. And I eat it because I'm a broke college student. (laughs) Exactly. And you have an excuse. Yeah. And then when you become a, uh, adult, you can go to a ramen restaurant and you can get ramen. That's not packaged and processed and all that stuff. Yes. Um, the next one is a photo of two, like uncooked bricks of ramen on top of each other on like a picnic blanket. 
And it says chronic diseases in some cases because of regular intake of instant noodles, the risk of of developing chronic conditions increases. Mm. Again, yes. If you intake anything at such a high volume that you are getting excess anything, excess sodium, excess fat, excess protein, like your body's going to react. Mm-hmm. Like it's that's what your body does. It's going to protect you. But like I just love the vendetta against big ramen. You know what I mean? Like it's like they're sitting in the boardroom of this marketing meeting and they're like, all right, guys, we need a we need a breaking news story. We need something that's going to captivate readers. We need something that's going to make someone screenshot this and put it on their podcast. What about a story against big ramen? Mm. Stupid little side note that I think is a little a little funny, but a lot of these photos, they're like you can barely read them yeah (laughs) you can barely read them yeah they're like not ada acceptable at all exactly and so i'm like at this point i don't even think it's an intern this is like kyle clark yeah he's he's fucking with us yeah he's he's the one making these and he's just like well i don't know what i'm doing yeah (laughs) yeah nine news is just killing it with the accurate information out here shout out nine news and then the next one is a photo of like a doctor pricking a guy's finger or someone's finger and it says diabetes due to excess intake of simple carbs the risk of developing diabetes increases over time again true if you're talking about excess intake but this whole article was titled weekend binge (laughs) so it's like if i eat ramen over one weekend am i going to go into the office the doctor's office the next day and he's like all right morgan sorry it's type two i'm you're gonna need to hand over the maru chan chicken flavor Mm. which is the best flavor Mm -hmm. do you like the chicken flavor i love the. it's that's the only one it's It's the only one you know it's it's the only one Um, And then the last one is actually finally ding, 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 a photo of instant ramen Mm. with like purple powder on it. Or is that cabbage? Um, No, that's definitely purple powder. It looks like purple (laughs) food dye that they just like put on there. They're like, they'll think this is some kind of interesting spice Mm -hmm. or maybe it's edible flowers. I don't know. And it says high cholesterol, eating too much saturated and trans fats can do irreversible damage to the heart. This is why doctors advise against eating too much of instant noodles as it can raise cholesterol levels. Do you realize every single one of these slides says excess intake, eating too much of what at regular intake? It's like, yes, you could make a million stories of these about any food. Eating oranges all day, every day, obviously isn't going to be good for you. Mm-hmm. Your body needs a variety of things. Mm-hmm. I don't know why this got me so hyped up. Um, well, I think it's just food culture in America. Unfortunately, I just I get I get so hyped up about this shit because like if I was a little girl and I saw this mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, my God, now I can't I, I can't eat ramen for the rest. You know, I, I can never touch ramen. Mm-hmm. I would grow up thinking that ramen was like really scary. And in yeah. reality, like, OK, eat one bowl. Yeah. And then eat another in a week or two or whatever you're, you know what I mean? That's between you and your healthcare professional. You don't Mm -hmm. need to fucking go to nine news. Nine news doesn't need to tell me when to eat ramen. Nine news should just stick to the news. Right. And it's like nine news is like bottom tier social media. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Bottom tier social media. Like "Mm." let's start a war. Let's start a war in Denver nine news against yeah. dude idk studio Denver just kidding lore. sorry nine news but i mean also speaking of bottom tier social media i just i have been reading your comments oh <laughs> my god i just saw some things that were a little questionable not to i'm not so to scared do of what brisk. you're about to bring up to me i'm not, so scared not to do like a little quick turnaround but i'm just it's like insane how people on social media love to say things that they don't have like <laughs> like why are you saying it yeah like also, there's no your consequences face is, like on the comment you know i don't know anyways i just wanted to read this because i thought it was um questionable oh god um i think this was your video about you said something about how it's like a really big issue that people sexualize women mm, and yeah. i was going through your comments and this person i will not I won't, I won't put this person on blast, it, but you can find the comment. <laughs> Uh-oh. It says, um, I get the urge to overly sexualize women. I do. It's like when you stand at the edge of a cliff and think, I could jump. And then he goes on to say, 
but you don't do it. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, so this guy's just telling us that his inner yeah. dialogue is an evil villain? Yeah, basically. He's like, on the inside, in my heart, my true passion, my life's calling is to sexualize women. He's but like, I, I can't help it that I, like other men, have intrusive mm-hmm. thoughts. Mm-hmm. I have not done the cognitive work to dispel right, that. Right, right. But because oh I God. don't do it, I'm actually the best person alive. That's right what now. I love. That's the, <laughs> the end of that comment. What was it? It's like, but you don't do it. But you don't do it. Yeah. It's like, congrats, man. But you just mm. admitted to everyone that you think about yeah. it all the time. What are you talking yeah. about? So I don't think that actually cancels it out. I yeah. Simple math. Oh, my God. Mm. For context, I don't read any of my comment sections. I've made it a habit of mine to not read comment sections specifically on videos I might read them on like a photo once in a while but I've gotten to the point where I get so many wild comments that I can't look at them because they kind of (laughs) affect my mental health yeah which is valid but Anissa looks at them I do look at them I'm a comment reader oh god I'm a comment reader sorry (laughs) it's no it's just terrifying because I hope that you are okay mentally yeah right that's yeah that's a good that'll be That'll be a question for the future. Oh, Maybe man. Maybe a few episodes down. Oh, no. <laughs> should I do another one? Or should I? Sure. Do another okay. one. Hit me with it. This one, uh, you talk a lot about, like, how straight white men are your audience. Mm. And I think this person thought you were, like, criticizing, I guess, because he was like, okay, what exactly is wrong with a straight white male? If it wasn't for a straight white man, you wouldn't be here. And I was like, oh, oh wow. That's oh, a real uh, comment? Yeah, that's a real comment. It's crazy. Six likes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Six people agree with him. Six <laughs> likes. <laughs> See, the thing, is, the thing is, is like, I don't have anything against straight white men. I don't. Like, I, I'm not anti-men. I'm, I, I just say men sometimes because it's easier to just say that than saying like some of the guys that follow me you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like I'm dating a straight white man yeah my dad's a straight white man there's nothing Mm -hmm. wrong with them but it just seems to be that the majority of hate that I receive or the majority of sexualization that happens on my platform is by straight white men Mm -hmm. and I don't know why that is you know like right I mean it's just the type of people that have been following you and i don't yeah. think like you ever criticize them well but it's I'll, just like people think you are yeah it's 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 an interesting like cultural time right now mm-hmm. because i feel like a lot of people are kind of realizing that maybe the folks in society that are causing issues tend to be men mm-hmm. but that does not at all mean that it's like all men are bad mm-hmm. like any logical person, anyone that is a functioning adult can reason with themselves and understand that, yes, of course, not all men are terrible. Right. Like we know men that are amazing, mm-hmm. right? We we're friends. We date them. We're friends with them. We work with them. Like, but it doesn't mean it doesn't negate the fact that, hey, the majority of the people that are being mean to me online are dudes. Mm-hmm. That's just a fact. Right. Wow. Yeah, I'm pretty anti-men, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you are, though. You're like, yeah, I'll say it. Sorry. I think, honestly, as a Gen Z kid, it's like in the, it's in the book. It's like in the rule book. If oh, you're, really? If you're a Gen Z woman, you are probably mm, hate men. Mm, and yeah. I'm, I'm okay with they that. They give you your platform converse, <laughs> yeah. and they're like, hey, by the way, we're anti-men. Yeah. And I'm like, sick. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, I feel, see, I feel the need to, to like qualify this and be like not all men because I know I'm gonna get fucking flamed (laughs) online and I do really believe that like I I hate I get I get upset when like women or sometimes female comics will do this thing which is they're they're allowed to say whatever they want on stage but I sometimes get upset when they like do all this shit about like men suck and men are this and men are that because part of me is like ah yeah but like that just gives them permission to do it to us too Mm -hmm. you know but everyone's different i mean i've had jokes where i like shit on men that's literally how i started going viral was from a joke (laughs) where i compared uh 
dating a dude in his 20s to raising a misbehaved son. Mm. And it got a lot of fucking attention. Mm. And it was horrible. So anyway, well, thanks for reading that to me, Anissa. I'm <laughs> yeah. going to go home and cry now. Yeah, sorry um, about that. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of every episode, I want to make it a habit to say a different affirmation. And uh, I'm one of those people that it took me a while to like warm up to the idea of affirmations. I always felt really cheesy sitting in a mirror and saying them to myself. I never believed them. I thought they were corny. I thought it was cliche. But as I've gotten older and as I've realized the power of positive thinking and positive self-talk I've realized that yeah some affirmations might sound a little corny but sometimes just thinking them or like saying them out loud when you're driving help it doesn't have to be a crazy ritual where you sit in front of a mirror and you're naked and you look at every part of yourself and you're like you're beautiful this is beautiful like no so at the end of every episode I'm going to give you a different affirmation and today I chose one that I've been saying for a long time it's one of my favorites and it is I am in the timeline of my highest good, my deepest desires, and my ultimate fulfillment. Mm. And that is basically just a way of you saying, I don't need to worry because I am already in this timeline. I am already in this life where everything that belongs to me is coming to me. It is coming to you. Mm -hmm. What belongs to you will come to you. It takes some time, but it will come to you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening. (laughs) And remember... Enjoy all foods, especially if they're boobs. Woo-hoo! Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to My Body, My Jokes. Please be advised that the information provided in this podcast is for general discussion purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. Always, always, always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare professional with any concerns you might have regarding the topics discussed in today's episode. Also, if you or someone you know is struggling with an eating disorder, please call the National Eating Disorders Association helpline at 1-800-931-2237. Bye.